Hello, my name is Lori Rubin, and I've got Colin Smith with us today. He is actually going to be one of our judges for a compositing photo contest, which is going to be really exciting. So we're super excited to have Colin with us because we're going to look into some of his own images, how he likes to composite, and also what he's looking for in a winning image. So welcome, Colin, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Colin is the CEO president of Software Cinema and Photoshop Cafe. He's a photographer, digital artist, musician, photo instructor, speaker, and he's also very passionate about drone photography. So uh, you do a little bit of everything, don't you, Colin? It certainly sounds that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So we're going to take a look at Photoshop Cafe. Uh, Colin, you've done such a fantastic job creating these fantastic products for people to learn. Uh, you can see right up front here, there's 71 products uh, just on the front here with Photoshop Cafe. And my understanding is that you've got a lot more, too, uh, under your store and streaming videos. So we're going to take a look at some of these uh, very interesting courses that you have available here. So one of the ones we're going to talk about today is the Compositing in Photoshop Sky City Project. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But, but you also have authors such as uh, Benjamin Van Wong and... Uh, you've got uh, Photoshop CC and Lightroom, uh, just an incredible amount of content here. Uh, in fact, I think your Lightroom was 13 hours, is that correct? Yeah, the Lightroom one is 13 hours, um, the Lightroom CC, and also the Photoshop CC one is also 13 hours. But what I've done on the streaming is, um, you know, with the DVDs, everything's in one DVD, but here I've been able to break them down so into smaller segments and to I've split, I think, the Photoshop one into the two, and I've split the Lightroom one up into three, so people don't have to do the whole 13 hours all at once. So if you want to learn about any of this stuff, I really highly recommend that you go to uh, academy.photoshopcafe.com slash courses. Uh, just great, great content here. We have a number of really great authors that we have been working with. Uh, some of the more recent, some of them we've been working with for years as Software Cinema, so, you know, under Software Cinema we have People like Jack Davis and Julianne Karst and you know, a bunch of uh, amazing people like that. Tony Corbell, of course, and Dean Collins, and uh, some of the more recent um, people that we've been working with. Uh, you know, Benjamin Bon Wong, we're actually just about to release this. It's brand new. Um, we've got stuff with Matthew Jordan Smith, and of course, we have uh, Lindsay Adler, um, Dave Money Zambat. If you look under authors, you can see this. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. These are great instructors, so that's wonderful. I think I recognize all of them. A lot of, of these are, you know, pretty much the who's who of the, the training industry. Yep, fantastic. So, Colin, tell us about Software Cinema. You also have this site that's got a massive amount of content on here as well. Yeah, Software Cinema has been going for quite a while. It was founded by Dean Collins, and um, there's a ton of amazing authors on here, you know, such as uh, Eddie Tapp and. Um, you know, we've got um, Jane Connor Zeiser, we've got Jack Grisnicki, um, Clay Blackmore, just a ton of um, just really amazing, talented photographers and artists. And uh, so there's quite a legacy of content out here, about 200 actual courses on there. And we're actually in a process right now of uploading all those into the training academy, which is academy.photoshopcafe.com. You can also go there by going learninthecloud.com. And it's actually going to be all of Software Cinema and Photoshop Cafe's uh, titles all available in one place. So um, we're pretty much going to just appear out of the blue with one of the largest training libraries in the world. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Everything you want to know about post-processing and more. <laughs> so it's fantastic. Yeah, there's a ton of photography and, you know, and lighting and stuff like that. Um, but, of course, the main emphasis for us really is post-processing and working on Photoshop. So, Colin, this is your Sky City project, which is a really great learning tutorial. We're talking about compositing today. And I'm just scrolling through here, but you've got a lot of information and lessons on how to put together photos and adding clouds. Can you talk a little bit about this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this was a real fun project. Um, I've been just finished teaching a lot of fundamentals, you know, these big 13-hour courses teaching people how to use the tools. And I really wanted to get back to Roots, which is putting these tools together and actually creating work. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of really cool techniques in here that 
when you talk about when you're working in a real world project, like solving real world problems, you know, which you can't necessarily do in a tool based training. Um, and in this way, you know, you're kind of going through start to finish without missing any steps. And, um, and it's also fun just to focus on the creativity. So, you know, I'm also talking about, you know, why, you know, why am I putting this here? Why am I putting that there? And so, um, understanding a lot about composition as well as trying to make things look realistic, sell it to your audience. And then, as you can see at the very end there, you can see that I'm doing some coloring effects, which is completely optional, but, um, a lot of people like to add the atmosphere. You can see I was painting in some clouds and smoke and um, just giving it that little extra at the end, you know, which just kind of makes it look cinematic or makes it look like a video game or whatever kind of feel or look or emotion you're trying to bring across. So it's more than just sticking a bunch of photographs together and making them look like they belong, but also adding a sense of style um, to it as well, which... Um, you know, because you can see, you know, different styles change as we get through time. Like right now, it's very popular to do like a little backlight with kind of like color cast coming across, mixing light. It's a very, um, and also a very high contrast kind of an effect, which is you know, very in fashion right now. So, so there is almost a, you know, fashion in digital art as well. Sure is. So now we're going to look at some of Colin's composited images. And so here's a great image. You've got five models here. Can you tell us more about this particular image? Uh, are they all different people or the same person? Yeah, this is uh, this one was kind of fun. This was all shot on the same day. Um, and it was the same model and uh, Lana. And um, she actually contacted me because she actually had um, Hodgkinson's um, and so she had to actually uh, buzz her hair off, and um, and she was sick, and so she wanted to actually be working on a book to encourage other girls. So she asked me if I would do a, a model shoot with her. So um, we had different um, costumes and wigs, and and she did her makeup and everything like that. And we did all the shooting in about two hours, and then just kind of composited into the scene. Now, there's things I could have done to make this more realistic, like to give it more of a, um, a warmer color cast to match the time of day and also put some depth of field effect in there. But I wanted to go a little more surrealistic and actually show her more than the background. So I kind of broke those rules on purpose on this one. Yeah, you know, when I first looked at this, I wasn't sure whether it was the same person or not. <laughs> so uh, this is a great image. Okay, let's take a look at your next one. Well, this is a very dynamic image. There's lots of movement. And what did you do for the background, and how did you composite her on this background? Okay, yeah, I shot her in my studio against the white seamless, and she was um, wanting to do these yoga shots and been working really hard on uh, to get into shape and stuff for this shoot. Um, so the background here is actually Death Valley. Um, that's what the surface is here. And then what I did is I kind of composited her and then just kept going. I, I really just started cutting around the background. It was one of those images I couldn't stop. And so what I was trying to do really is kind of have like this aura coming from the core here, which is what all this is kind of coming out to kind of show that, you know, kind of like what's going on spiritually while she's doing her yoga. For compositing, you can also use it for commercial purposes. Uh, for instance, like this, this is a great example. Yeah, this is um, actually was a book cover for a book I did with McGraw-Hill. Um, and the uh, photography was actually done by Lise um, Cage, or Cagney, I think you said. She's in Canada. Um, actually photographed the model for me. I kind of gave instructions of what we needed for the model, and she found the model and did the shots. And everything else was um, just essentially created from scratch in Photoshop as far as, like, the interface elements. Just things I saw in shows and movies and stuff kind of inspired me, so I did that using the different tools and Photoshop. And it was kind of like at the time an homage to the Matrix, you know, when they went into, um, what was it, Zion, you know, and they've got the little screens and stuff, but we kind of did that. And it's supposed to be like a futuristic interface for Photoshop, kind of showing the different channels and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely a very commercial piece. So this is a really interesting piece. It's uh, Game of Thrones. So what is this? You've got a background, interesting background. You've got this really kind of smoky effect and interesting colors going on. How did you put this one together? 
Uh, yeah, this one was just kind of a fun, you know, almost like a fan art. I don't usually do a lot of fan art stuff, but I figured I would in this case. This was actually last year at Comic-Con. This was a cosplayer, and I had her under a tree for, I think, about five seconds um, to shoot her. I kind of cut her up, and then uh, what was in the background was actually a castle in Central Park, and I just wanted just over here, and I just kind of wanted to imply that a little bit without showing it too much. And all the smoke is actually just a brush I painted all the smoke in. Uh, in Photoshop to kind of give it some atmosphere and kind of fading into the smoke down the bottom here and then gave it a very kind of gritty kind of an effect like you would see on the Game of Thrones kind of style of art. It looks like your model's on a diagonal, your background is on a diagonal. How did you match these two pieces up together? Yeah, this one here um, was just, I wanted to actually, I'm, I'm glad you noticed that kind of Dutch angle there because I wanted to give it a little bit of energy. Um, and so essentially all I did is I just took the background, was actually an HDR image that I shot in Chicago at uh, Union Station, and then just kind of shot her in the studio, extracted it, put in the bottom, put a little reflection on the bottom of the shoes. And what really pulls this together is the coloring. So, you know, it's one of the things I look for in compositing is does the coloring in the foreground and the background match? Because that's one of the things that can be... Um, you know, can make or break a piece and make it look very artificial or more realistic. This particular image, you've got fire on the guitar, you got fire coming off the floor, you got smoke going on, uh, looks like dust or glitter coming up from above. <laughs> you got a lot of things going on here. Yeah, a lot of this actually was just using blend modes. Um, the one thing, the little spotlight at the top, if you look in the background, you can see there's a little bit of brick wall in there too. So there's a lot of layers going on here, and really what it is is just using the blend modes for the smoke and the fire, and um, just layering stuff and uh, experimenting with overlay, um, kind of, and screen modes and soft and hard light uh, blending modes, which is, you know, even like the textures in the background, you know, just the dust or whatever you want to call it, it's just texture to add some visual noise there to just kind of make it a little bit more interesting. It could also be seen as the ashes kind of rising here too from the mm -hmm. fire and the smoke. So this is actually part of a series I'm working on of different elements with uh, girls and guitars. So we've gone from fire to this icy kind of water splashing up, a very different look. And you've got some text in there too. So that's an interesting combination. Yeah, this one actually was sort of a commissioned piece, so to speak. Uh, Photoshop User Magazine contacted me and wanted me to do a, a cover story uh, with compositing and 3D. So um, my restriction was I had to do it all in Photoshop. So um, I created the text in Photoshop. I shot, um, actually this is uh, Lana, and this is actually another one from that same series that I showed earlier on. So I have reused a lot of those photos. And then just the water was just uh, compositing that in there to try and make it look a little bit more dynamic and put a little energy in there, um, a lot of reflections and, and things like that. It was actually a lot of fun doing this one. Okay, this is a really interesting one here with the mermaid, the reflection that you got there. You have a moon placed out in the background. With the reflection, is this a matter of flipping it and creating some blending modes with that? Or how, what kind of effect did you do with that? Yeah, that's uh, pretty much bang on. Um, you know, all the different pieces were from different photos that, that I shot. The moon was when I had the super moon. Um, the foreground was Laguna Beach, and, uh, and then I just wanted to make it look like water. Um, I tried to do some stuff in the studio, and unfortunately it didn't work. Um, so I kind of saved it by, by doing this water effect here. And I just kind of created the little ripple with your finger to try and add a little bit of realism into it. But initially what I did is I had all these, um, she was lying on these trunks, um, black trunks. And she still hates me because they were uncomfortable. And apparently I should have put pillows on there. So <laughs> something to make the next time. And, um, and I did this underlighting and I was trying to create caustics, you know, with the reflections of the waves. And um, it just didn't work. It made it look like she had some skin eating disease. So... I had to um, kind of go away from that. Now the tail was uh, modeled in Maya and textured inside of Photoshop and um, the actual fins themselves, I'm going to redo these. These were just kind of temporary and I never got around to fixing them. I want to kind of do these like really much better and kind of have them like Siamese fighting fish. So at some point I'm going to work this piece and finish it up. 
Here you've got a very kind of gothic scene here. In fact, it looks like you've got a person or somebody up on the tower up above that's just kind of looking up at. What's the story behind this one? Yeah, this one here um, was kind of fun. This is a building I shot in Chicago. It's HDR image, and I did some stuff in the sky here. It's supposed to be like a superhero thing. And what got good versus evil, if you look up here, I don't know if I can zoom in, I can't zoom in anymore, but we've got our villain here, and um, and he's wearing like a long black leather trench coat. I shot him um, actually in the same studio as I shot her, and I just kind of put it together trying to create a little bit of a story so she's got her eye contact, and he's up there. It's like they're in the middle of this fight or really more. They're summoning the elements and actually just getting ready to have this superhero um, fight out. This is a really interesting image. You've got these uh, fighter planes coming right at you uh, in a cityscape. So you must have taken at least uh, three different kind of images, I guess, and kind of put them together. So what, what gave you an idea to do something like this? Um, I actually called this one uh, Racing Down Chicago River. So this is actually the same time as the previous one I shot. Um, bunch of HDR images in Chicago, so I kind of gave this one a, a kind of um, film kind of a look, cinema kind of cinematic type of thing. And I, I was quite a few years ago I did this, and I can't even remember. I actually did it for something. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I wanted to create energy and, you know, kind of like you would see like on a video game or something like that. So you could put the type up the top here, and then this was just kind of giving energy with these jets coming it's actually the same jet, and I actually used that uh, 3D um, in Photoshop and just kind of dropped those, that jet in and actually just manipulated it into different positions and added the shadows. And to be honest, the whole thing didn't really work that well until I added the glow here. I added the, not the glow, but the blur. I added the radial blur, which kind of gave it a sense of movement, and then just suddenly the whole piece actually started working at that point. Um, so, Colin, this is a really interesting image. You've got, it looks like rain coming down. You've got the, the lights going through the the rain. So it looks like you did quite a bit of manipulation to make this look pretty real. Yeah, it was just kind of fun. Um, you know, obviously it's a stylized piece. You know, this is um, New York. And actually, if you look at the original photograph, it wasn't even um, really, it was actually during the daytime. So I did a day for night here. I turned all the headlights on on the cars and kind of darkened it and down a lot of dodging and burning and smearing the lights. All these lights in the buildings, I turned these on. They, they were not there. Um, and then I popped this car in and added the headlights. I actually shot that in a showroom at LA Convention Center and we put the water splashes and the light streaks and everything behind it. So, you know, a lot of the – what I was really doing with this one is I just really wanted to experiment with um, – you know, doing it day for night, turning it into night, and then really adding something dramatic with the lights. You know, like if you would look at it, you know, like you're looking through a window or something like that in the rain, you'll see these smears of reflections and kind of stuff like that that would kind of happen from from that. You know, so I was just really trying to, if nothing else, really create just an atmospheric effect from something that was very, um, just very ordinary. This particular one um, scares me, <laughs> I have to be honest with you. Uh, it, it's very good. It's, the compositing is great, but just uh, Catwoman. Um, so what was your idea about uh, putting this cat face on this woman? Uh, I was just kind of having fun. This is actually one of my really early pieces. I did this like over 10 years ago, um, probably longer, um, before I was, you know, probably maybe even 15 years ago. And I wasn't doing a lot of photography myself at the time, so... I, I used stock photography on this, and I, I don't know, just one day I was just thought, oh, it would be kind of fun to um, kind of take, you know, do the real Catwoman. I had a friend of mine, Oliver Ottner, um, who did a thing called Nature Morphosis, and he would um, morph people with different things from nature, and maybe, you know, I kind of got a little inspiration from that as well, and just thought it would be, it would be fun, you know. So here's this woman who's like, you know, reaching out to touch her face, and suddenly it's furry, and she's just realized that she's a cat. So this one is Kitty Godzilla, right? <laughs> or Kitty Killer? I don't know. Not too sure which one you call it, but I love this one. Uh, I, I remember the first time that you posted this, and it's you know this little kitty coming through the city and just creating mass destruction. So there's that 
<laughs> a very opposite happening here, what you expect with a cat. But, uh, you know, I love the tones in this image and the dust. It actually looks very natural. <laughs> it looks pretty real. So, again, what gave you this inspiration to uh, have this kitty destroy the city? Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, actually, this was one, one of my uh, buddies from Montana. It was just like a tiny little kitten. And um, I don't know, I just loved the juxtaposition of, you know, this innocent, cute little kitten suddenly, you know, just, it's really just having fun and it's just, you know, to the, to the kitten it's nothing. But, you know, obviously to these people it's, that living in New York is quite devastating. So, <laughs> you know, it just seemed like a fun thing, you know, because we're used to seeing giant lizards and scary looking creatures and you know, very scary monsters coming through causing mass destruction. You know, and what if it was a cute little kitten? <laughs> That's great. So, Colin, this is your Sky City project example, which is really fantastic. You've got a lot of great things going on here. So, um, again, beautiful colors in this particular image. And um, I love the clouds and this, the sky. And really looking forward to seeing even more composites that are coming out, you know, in the future from you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, this was uh, just kind of, a, kind of a fun piece as well. Um, you know, we're... I shot the model in the studio and then just kind of add a lot of stuff in the background. Um, I finally got a use for those clouds that I shoot out the airplane with my iPhone. You know, I'm always shooting, constantly shooting textures and just things that are interesting. And um, and I use Lightroom and I catalog them all together and give them uh, keywords. So when I am going and doing compositing, you know, I've got keywords like clouds or whatever, textures, different places are all cataloged. You know, so for example, the sun up here on the left, this was an actual sunset from a different photograph and, um, you know, actually pulled the real sun out. You know, sometimes there's nothing better than actually using something that really exists. All I'm really trying to do here is just sell the idea in the background of this tall city. You know, it's not the center of attention. People are not really looking at it. They're looking at it here. So what it is really is putting the effort and the time into the areas that people are looking at. So, so one of the things I'm teaching on here is not just how to extract all these objects, because this is actually just a pier, a jetty, um, and, you know, merging all these different elements together from different photos, but how to do it efficiently, you know, whereas people actually do it for a living, you know, how to make money from it, because you, you're not going to make a very good living if it takes you a thousand hours to do a piece. What you want to be able to do is bang these out quickly, like, a, you know, this piece took me an hour and a half to do, um, you know, which commercially is profitable but you know you start spending 10 15 100 you know a thousand hours then suddenly you're working for you know two dollars an hour <laughs> right yeah. so Colin thank you so much for sharing this great information I have a question for you uh, for this photo contest what are you looking for in a winning image there's, there's really two sides um, to this there's the artistic side and then there's the execution side of it um, so, you know, anyone has a chance, whether they're not experienced with Photoshop or they're very experienced. Um, really what it comes down to is composition, storytelling, overall impact as one side of it. You know, how good is the piece? How good is the idea? Is it a brilliant idea? Is it clever? Is it witty? Or is it just something very cliche, you know? Um, and then the other side of it is there's some technical things that definitely do help a lot. One, good clean extraction. Um, you know, want to see... You know, you don't want to see halos and stuff around the edges and bits of hair left over, but that object's being cut out, extracted nicely. Um, and I have some free tutorials on Photoshop Cafe that show how to extract images, by the way. Um, maybe I'll put a link to those or something. Um, and then other things I'm looking for is matching. How well do the pieces match? Does the lighting match? That's something to consider. You know, uh, you don't want to have shadows on one side on something and then shadows on the other side. Think about where your light source is how it's illuminating that object, how the pieces fit together, matching scale, uh, perspective. Uh, perspective is one that people mess up a lot. Um, you know, you could probably Google two or three point, actually three point perspective. There's uh, plenty of art lessons out there and it's a good thing to learn when you're doing compositing is think about that, um, you know, because as things go further away, they get smaller and you have to think about that to scale. Um, so things look like they belong in there. Um, how well are the shadows executed, if there's reflections that should be there, um, you know, and clouds. So that's atmospheric. That's like blending it, making it feel like it's part of that picture and not just like a billboard um, with someone standing in front of it, but you want to actually integrate them into the scene. So, you know, um, 
there's a, there's a lot of things there. So I guess one side I'm going to be looking at the technical, how well it's executed. The other side I'm going to be looking at the storytelling. And then the third thing I'm really going to be looking at is the mood the overall. You know, like, do the colors match? You know, um, you don't have to go crazy with coloring. You can leave it very natural if you like. Uh, but if you do decide to give it a coloring effect, does it fit the mood? You know, because the psychology is behind different colors. So when you look at films, for example, you know, horror movies, you usually see these cooler colors, you know, the blues, the greens, the violets, you know, these, these kind of colors. Um, you know, when you're out in the desert or you're in the beach relaxing, it tends to be warmer colors. So, um, you know, just how well are these elements working? Is it depth of field or is everything in focus? Either way, you know, it can be great. Um, you know, it can be very minimalistic or it can be, you know, super busy. It's really up to you. But typically I would say try not to make it so busy. Always focus on having something as the main center of attention and everything else should be really supporting it. Three planes, foreground, midground, and background, um, you know, and really good compositing. And really comes from map painting and digital art, even like traditional art has those elements in there and it's all kind of, works together so um, you know that's a lot of information there maybe um, if you could try to work a couple of those elements it'll definitely make a stronger piece. Thank you so much Colin great advice and thanks everyone for watching we hope that you learned a few tips and be sure to check out Colin's photoshopcafe.com website for more training videos tutorials and lots of great information Thanks, everyone.